Hey everybody, my name is Michelle and in this video I'm going to do my 2021 bookshelf tour. It was definitely time for an updated version, mostly because I haven't really done a bookshelf tour since I've moved into my apartment about six months ago. So I feel like I haven't properly shown you my bookshelves, how they look now since I moved in here and I really want to do that and I do know that you guys really love bookshelf tours. Also I recently reorganized my bookshelves so they now all look nice and pretty. You can watch that video somewhere over here down below in the description box if you want to see that. But now they are all ready for a new and updated bookshelf tour and it's going to be a long one and I'm not going to pick out every single book and like tell you the title because at this point I have more than 500 books so that is just not really doable anymore so it's going to be a bit of a casual bookshelf tour I'm going to talk and tell you about the books and go to the different genres and the different parts of my bookshelves I am very happy with them I'm happy that I have like all these bookshelves behind me and they look so pretty they are really my pride and joy i love the way they look and i cannot wait to show them off to you also i will include chapters in this video so down here you can see the different parts that will be dedicated to different genres so you can skip ahead to your favorite part if you want to i won't blame you if there's only a certain part that you want to see but yeah that is down below so make use of that if you want to but now i think it's definitely time to get started with my bookshelf tour and i'm going to show you them and it's going to be a lot of fun i really hope you will enjoy it so here they are my bookshelves as you can see they are basically made up of two parts i have two bookshelves over here and then three over there these three bookshelves over there are the original ones that i had back home at my parents house and that i brought with me and then these two are new ones because I needed the space and it's also really nice that I can now have my bookshelves in my living room instead of my bedroom that's the very much a positive side of having an own apartment and living on my own but yeah I'm just going to go through with them and I think I'm going to start with the left shelf and then I think I'm just going to go from top to bottom and show you anything uh, yeah that is noteworthy and special. I grabbed a little chair and I'm going to start here. This entire part is all historical fiction and it is very much my favorite genre. Also this is a picture of one of my best friends from when we were on holiday in Greece I think about four years ago. The picture doesn't completely fit but she gave me this as a housewarming gift so yeah that is over here. But then beside the picture I have my World War II historical fiction books and there are kind of a lot and these aren't even all of them. I have more World War II books over here like but wow um, yeah I guess it's definitely a specific type of book that I own a lot of. We have We Are the Lucky Ones and then Tattooist and Silka's Journey by uh, Heather Morris. Really love those. Uh, I have my LS Network book and The Huntress all by Kate Quinn and this is a new one. This is The Rose Code. As of filming this I have not read The Rose Code yet but I want to do soon because oh, I love Alice or like Alice. I love Kate Quinn. We have Ruta Sabaty's books over here. Also very good. These two I have not read yet. And then over here we have two more World War II books that I also have not read yet but who sound very interesting because yeah... I am a sucker for World War II historical fiction books. But then over here I have another very specific section and that is my Tudor history, Tudor historical fiction bits. So we have books like Wolf Hall, which I have not read yet, but I love this golden edition so much. It's so pretty. And then here um, a book about Anne Boleyn, which I have not read yet. <laughs> then The Solution by S.J. Sampson. Like so many people keep recommending this to me. I own it, I just have not read it yet. Then we have San Philippa Gregory, and I do, I have read these books. This is The Other Berlin Girl, one of my all-time favorites. Not because it's so well written, but because it's just a book that sort of started my love for Tudor history and and Berlin, basically. And this one is especially special to me because I bought it at the actual Tower of London, in London and I just love that. More Philippa Gregory, this is actually non-fiction which like I don't have any other non-fiction history on these shelves that's on another spot but this one is specifically Tudor and Boleyn, uh, The Lady in the Tower so it deserved to be here. And then uh, two books that are new, Hamnet which is about the son of Shakespeare and then Kate Moss which isn't really Tudor history but is around the same time periods. Then a bit of a lost book. This is Regeneration by Pat Barker, which is um, 
World War One. So uh, yeah, not really. It's just hair because it fit hair. That is also a theme that you're going to see hair a lot. That books are just there because they fit there. And then Shaggy Bane, and this is a fake plant from Ikea. It's like, I think lots of people have this specific type of fake plant, but it just looks so nice. Like it really gives some atmosphere and coziness. Then we have the Lady Janie series, which I also really, really love. I have not read My Calamity Jane yet, but my Lady Jane, oh, so funny, so good. And also Tudor related, that one. So I guess it sort of fits on here, but also because it just fit all nicely and it looked aesthetically pleasing like this. Then we go down one shelf and here we have, again, more historical fiction, but not really with a specific theme. Uh, some of these I have read like uh, Burial Rites and Before We Were Yours and Kindreds. Also The Shadow of the Wind, but this is a Dutch edition. And then the sequel, which I have in English. And some other books that I really want to read that sound very interesting, but of course, yeah. Same story with a lot of those books. I have not read them yet. Over here, again, more historical fiction because I have a lot. My Taylor Jenkins Reid historical fiction books. Malibu Rising is a new one and it's pretty and it's really enjoyable. Definitely a very good book to read during summer. The Vanishing Half, actually, there's also, um, that is missing, <laughs> The Mothers by Britt Bennett as well. That is supposed to be here, but it isn't because I'm very badly prepared. Kristen Hanna books, which I adore. Like, oh, The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. If you know me a little bit, then you know know how much I love it. More books. Oh, Where the Crawl, That Sing, that's a good one. The rest I haven't... Oh, I've read Out of the Easy, which is okay, but not that special. Um, maybe I will unhaul it, I'm not sure. Then this picture of me with my dad. It's very reflective, so maybe you can't really see it, but at this picture I'm 10 years old, and it's my first trip to London with my dad, because... My dad does that, like he takes trips with us, with me, my brother and my sister individually, like city trips. We've been to Paris, we've been to London, we've been to Rome, things like that. And this is my favorite picture of the two of us together. So um, yeah, and my dad also loves history and that's why he <laughs> has a place on the historical fiction shelf. Then we go here again, more historical fiction, more Ruth the Sabbaties. Like I don't really have authors together anymore, which I'm only just now realizing. I've gone more for, I guess, aesthetically pleasing, but you know, it still looks nice. Also another Kate Quinn, but this one is a bit different. It's like from her older work, but also very enjoyable. Then next up, I have my shelves that are sort of mythology inspired shells or like myth retellings magical stories and also books that are like maybe a little bit in a sort of genre but then also not completely so it's basically mythology books retellings and other <laughs> what sort of fits there everything that has a bit of a magical element and first of all another fake ikea plant because again you know it looks nice then here we have the song of achilles and a translation of the odyssey by homer the Deathless Girls, which I think is a retelling. The Essex Serpent, which has been on my shelves for absolutely ages. And I don't even know if I'm ever going to actually read it. But it's just so pretty to look at. The Binding by Bridget Collins. This one is supposed to be really good. Still have not read it yet. Then here we have uh, Greek Mythology. The Silence of the Girls, which is a Troy retelling from the female perspective. A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes, which is also a retelling of Troy from the female perspective. And then Circe by Madeline Miller and Ariadne, which is recently released about Ariadne, the myth, and it looks very pretty. Like, oh, these books I will show you because they are gorgeous and just so stunning. And wow, I love it. I love the shelves, this particular shelf for its looks because it's, oh, Stunning. Then we have over here more myth retellings. This is uh, Irish myth. This is, I actually don't know, but it looks very pretty. And then this, I'm not really sure if it's myth. I think it's actually more horror, but I put it here because of like authors of, um, yeah, they're both by Sylvia Morena Gracia. This is actually a Peter Pan retelling, which I have not read yet, but it has been here for a long time. This is actually not any kind of magic mythology this should be on the fantasy shelf i don't know why master of sorrows is on here not really sure how i managed that but mm, i guess it looks pretty oh here we have the winter night trilogy oh that one is so good i loved it i finished this series um yeah it's russian myth inspired it is so good i it's one of the few series that i finished in a relatively short amount of time jane Steele, which is a uh jane Eyre retelling also very good some more things uh 
V.E. Schwab with uh, The Secret Life of Eddie Rue or The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue. And then here, The Night Circus. I have two editions, a regular paperback and then this beautiful, um, yeah, what is it? Waterstones edition that I ordered, I think, last year. And then two editions of The Starless Sea as well, which I haven't even read yet, so I'm not really sure why I have two editions of these, but also very very pretty like oh it's gorgeous then next up we have more i guess magical books a bit historical fiction because this one the eight life is first of all massive but it's a combination of magic and historical fiction so it's sort of like i didn't really know where to put it so this one should be fine same for the snow child by you and ivy is also a mix of magical elements and historical fiction then ninth house and <laughs> the secret history kind of uh, what is it called? Dark Academia. That's the word that I was looking for, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. But these are all books that are just a little bit weird, I guess. The Ink series, which I really enjoy, but I still have not finished yet. And then over here, more, yeah, sort of magical books, sort of in between. The Red and the Dawn duology, which is a booktube classic. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it in a while. But back when I just discovered booktube, these books were... All the rage. The Astonishing Color of After also has been on my TBR for a while. And I think it's supposed to be a bit magical, but I'm not really sure. More books like that. The Midnight Library, which I recently finished and really enjoyed. And then we have some Chris and Hannah books, but these are more like contemporaries. So yeah, at this point we're getting to contemporaries or like books that are sort of contemporary, but with a twist. Seven Sisters, Eleanor Oliphant, love it. Never Let Me Go, which is kind of a weird one. Um, Everything I Never Told You actually should be historical fiction because it does take place in the 1970s. Yeah, whatever. I'm just going to leave it here for now. That's my ID when it comes to bookshelves. Sometimes there's logic, sometimes there really isn't. The Circle, I think, actually should be more sci-fi, but again... I just put it here. Night Road is also Kristen Hanna. Firefly Lane, which is now a Netflix show, which I've watched and it's actually really enjoyable. Then we have uh, more contemporaries. Here we get to proper contemporaries. A Little Life, which broke my heart earlier this year. Oh, that one was intense. It made me cry like crazy. My Dark Vanessa, which is indeed very dark. And then we have some more. Um, yeah, Moonrise is also a good one, by the way. Um, it's about a boy whose brother is on that row. Some more contemporaries. A List of Cages. Every Last Word, also a favorite of mine. And yeah, here we get into the territory of proper contemporaries i guess now we're getting on to the shelf directly beneath it because we're staying in the same genre this is again contemporary a vase with some fake flowers that is just there to make sure these books don't fall over moxie is relatively new haven't read yet radio silence i have read i thought it was a very good one uh, what Alice Forgot by Leah Moriarty is actually really, really funny and very enjoyable. Oh, Heartless. I have not read it yet, but I know I should this summer because so many people love it so much. And more Alice Oseman. Again, don't know why those books aren't together. We have Becky Abertali. Some uh, John Green, Every Day, which I read years ago and really enjoyed at the time. And Allies and Her Monsters, also a good one. And I really love the cover of this because I just think it's so well designed. Then over here, we are getting to trailer books which is also a genre that i really love to read especially during the summer even though i haven't read a trailer book in a while i should make an effort to do that more here we have um you which you probably know because of the netflix adaptation which was so popular and the second season which i actually never finished but the book is very interesting stephen king this is not really a thriller i think but it's just here because it's stephen king 11 22 63 which is a weird time travel novel and it's also really big one agatha christie book which was okay i mean it's definitely not written <laughs> recently and you can tell sadie is amazing sadie by courtney summers is heartbreaking thrilling intense definitely can recommend this one especially the audiobook the audiobook is amazing perfect girl uh, oh leah moriarty big little lies and the husband secrets also perfect summer reads they are Perfect to read during summer. I have some Karen Slaughter books. Not a whole lot, but a couple of them. The Good Daughter is my favorite out of all of them. It's like, wow, it's so intense and graphic and horrifying, but it's so well written. The Shining by Stephen King, which is more horror than thriller, but I don't really have a separate horror shelf. Misery, which I actually have read. It was very good, very interesting. My Sister Rosa, oh... 
love this book so much. It's one of my favorites. Very creepy as well. And then to... Oh, I haven't read this one actually. And The Hate List has been a while since I've read that one, but it's also very interesting. Here I have my middle grade books and here we have... A Monster Calls, which is, wow, one of the books that made me cry like crazy because this book, even though it's short and even though it's relatively simple, it was so powerful. The Nevermore series, which I have not read yet. The uh, Pinch of Magic series, which I've only read the first book of, not the second and the third. More middle grade and yeah, this one. And then we have Murder Most Unladylike, Ink Heart, Frost Heart, Wonder, like so many amazing middle grade books that I really need to read because... I actually haven't read that much middle grade yet, even though it's such an interesting and amazing genre. But I do have a very nice collection over here. And then next to it, I actually have uh, some of my classics. I say some of my classics, I mean all of my classics, because I don't really have any more apart from these. I have this very pretty edition of Little Women, and I love it. I have not read it yet, but I do love the cover. Uh, Rebecca by Daphne, Daphne du Maurier, which I have read, which was interesting. <laughs> the Handmaid's Tale, have not read it yet, but I have watched the first two seasons. Tess of the Dubervilles, which I also have not read yet, but I've seen the miniseries. Oh, The Bell Jar, I want to read that one soon because it's supposed to be really, really good. And here, uh, another Little Women, but another edition that was sort of like an accident, so I need to unhaul that one. Sense and Sensibility, Wartering Highs, Pride and Prejudice, I have read all of those. I've read Jane Eyre. Animal Farm, I've read, which is... <laughs> It is, um, yeah, it is funny if you kind of understand the metaphor and the parody of it. And then lastly, the picture of Dorian Gray, this very pretty orange edition. I love it and it's supposed to be very good. I hear many people say that even if they don't like classics, they do enjoy Dorian Gray. So... I should make this a priority on my TBR. Now it's time to go over to the right part of my shelves. And yeah, very pretty again. I think I'm first going to do the sort of series themed shelves and then go over to the next ones. So when it comes to series themed shelves, here I have Game of Thrones. I have an English box set of the English editions of Game of Thrones. Poor little Sansa here is just over there to make sure these books don't fall over because they kept doing that. So poor Sansa has been reduced to, yeah, a bookstopper. Then these books here underneath are inside HBO's Game of Thrones, seasons one and two, seasons four, and note three and four. Very interesting, a lot of beautiful pictures in there. Here we have the uh, illustrated edition of the first book, A Game of Thrones, also very pretty. I think it was like a birthday gift a couple of years ago. Then I have more Pop Funkos. I have Jon Snow, Daenerys Targaryen, Marjorie Terrell, and a little Daenerys Targaryen. Love them, very pretty. Um, yeah, these are some of my favorite characters from the show, and I think these Pop Funkos just looked really cute and really add something to the shelves. And then behind it, I have my Dutch editions of Game of Thrones. So, um, yeah, this. These are the Dutch translations and these are the editions that I originally read. As you can see, they are separated, like some of the books are separated in two parts. And these editions are very big, but they are so beautiful. Apart from the fact that some of them have stickers on them uh, that I cannot get off, as you can see over here. But I still think they're very pretty and I just love the way they look. And now it's time for my Shadowhunter shelf, because as you probably know, I do own a lot of Shadowhunter books. Here we have the first two books in the, what are they called? the last hour series then this box set of the infernal devices very pretty a necklace a what is it called like a clockwork angel necklace the graphic novels of the infernal devices also very pretty the hardback editions of the infernal devices i really have a lot of editions when it comes to shadow hunter books then these are one of my prettiest books these are the special waterstones editions of the um the dark artifices series wow i really have a lot of trouble remembering series names today so so pretty like look at them i love it they are so beautiful together with the foiling and the oh just so pretty and of course i also have the uh, original hardbacks these are the editions that i actually read also very pretty but i just think these ones are prettier then on to all of my uh, mortal instruments books this is the 10th anniversary edition of city of bones this is like a special Fairy loot candle from years and years ago. The, um, yeah, the American editions with the spines that sort of make the illustration. Really love it. Oh, also 
Shadowhunter Codex, Illustrated, uh, History of Notable Shadowhunters, Shadowhunters, wow, and Denizens of the Downworld. A, um, yeah, rune candle, which I've had for years, a uh, sort of like copy of uh, Isabel's bracelet, her whip bracelet, the colorful English editions of Shadow, no, not Shadow and Bone. Wow, I need to, <laughs> I'm so bad with pronouncing titles today, I'm sorry. All of the Immortal Instruments, I mean, and these are so pretty. I love them. I'm so happy with them. And then some, uh, yeah, I guess companion books, the Bane Chronicles, the Red Scrolls of Magic series, which I actually don't really enjoy. And also the uh, bind-ups of short stories, Ghosts of the Shadow Market and Tales of the Shadowhunter Academy, also very good. And then here I have all my bookmarks, which are a lot. I have a lot of bookmarks. These are by basically Brits. This is by Sabine from Sabine's Book Nook. I have a lot of them, like a lot. <laughs> and they are in this nice mug that says My Mind Palace, which was also once in a fairy loot box many years ago. And now we have reached a part of my bookshelves that I think many of you have been waiting for. Because now we're at my stuffed reindeer, <laughs> Rudolph. Okay, just kidding. But this one is also living on my bookshelves, as has been the case for many years. It's... A gift from my mother when she went to Sweden when I asked for a reindeer as a joke and she gave me this stuffed animal. But just kidding, of course, you are waiting for the Harry Potter shells. Please let me know if you skipped immediately to this part. I would love to hear. I think there are probably a lot of people who did and otherwise I can just see it in the analytics how many people watched this part. But yeah, let's just go through them. This is a flask that isn't necessarily Harry Potter related, but... It looks Harry Potter related, so it's there. This is my first English paperback set of Harry Potter. This is the first set that I actually read in English. I got it for my 18th birthday from my grandparents and yeah, it's really nice. I love the way it looks and it's just, it's very practical and I love how colorful they are. These are Harry Potter or Hogwarts playing cards. They are very pretty, but I'm not going to take them out because... <laughs> They are very hard to like organize. Then I have some of the original covers of the Harry Potter series. I would love to have them all one day, but the first three books in the original covers are very hard to find. But these ones, Goblet of Fire, Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince, Deadly Hallows, I all found at secondhand bookstores. So these are there and that's just really nice. This candle which just says Hermione. I've never burned it because I don't really like scented candles. But you know, it's Harry Potter related. So it gets to live on my shelves. Then this, uh, yeah, Ravenclaw quill. Because in case you don't know, I am a Ravenclaw. And uh, yeah, it looks very cute. I never actually used it, but I think it looks cute here. And then over here, I have my most precious Harry Potter books. These are the most special out of all of them because these are the Harry Potter books that used to belong to my cousin. My cousin very sadly died last year, but I got to have her Harry Potter books to remember her by and it's kind of a mismatched set, but I actually really love it because I feel like that just makes it even more special. So I treasure these very much. Um, she was only 19, so it's very like, it's a very sad story, but I'm very happy that I have these to remember her by and they are very special to me. Then to the next Harry Potter shelf, I have my first Pop Funkos, just Harry. Hermione and Ron, the golden trio, of course, they had to be there. And then behind it, we have the famous, the set, the Harry Potter box set that I'm probably known for. Please let me know if you have been here since that original unboxing video from years and years ago that still gets a lot of views, even though... <laughs> It's really not a special video. I just show you the covers of these books. I'm not going to take them out right now. I have like three videos on my channels where you can see them. The most recent one is my recent, well, not that recent, but my most recent Harry Potter collection video. These books are very hard to get out of their box and very hard to get into their box. So I'm not going to do it right now, but this box set is kind of a staple on my YouTube channel because yeah, that video of the unboxing, <laughs> I don't really like to watch it. It's very awkward, but it's still there and lots of people have watched it. Then over here, I have the original Dutch Harry Potter editions that I read as a child. These are the editions I grew up with. Fun fact is that um, these editions aren't actually mine. They belong to my mother. She bought them. She read them to us when we were little and we read them as well, but they are not mine. The story is I kind of abducted them. I just put them in the moving boxes, took them with me, didn't tell my mother until they were already here. She kind of wants them back, I think, but I'm just keeping them hostage for now. So if you're watching mom, 
they are doing very well <laughs> they have a good home here i love them like these books i love them so much because they are full of like oh they are so beaten down i have read them so many times like oh they are in horrible condition but that is why i love them so much they mean so much to me and that's why they deserve a very special place on these harry potter shelves my i'd rather be at hogwarts um sign because it's the truth like who wouldn't want to be and then uh two french editions of harry potter who the, sec bleh, the first one and the second one. And I'm throwing everything down now. I will have to fix that later. But this is Harry Potter et la Chambre des Secrets. Very bad French pronunciation. And oh, it's going to get messy. Oh, I will fix that later. And the first one which is Harry Potter and uh, Harry Potter à l'école des sorcières. I love to have them in different languages. So yeah. I will need to fix this <laughs> instantly. <laughs> and then the final Harry Potter shelf. Because yes, I do have three Harry Potter shelves as of right now. Because there's just so much. I have my big books. Because this is the biggest shelf. This is the only place where they actually fit. And we have all the books like uh, Fantastic Beasts. The Illustrated Edition. The Case of Beasts. The Film Wizardry. The Harry Potter Wizardry. Like all of these amazing books. The Illustrated Editions of Harry Potter. The first four books. I actually don't know when a next one is going to be published might be a while more Puffunkos we have Newt Scamander Luna Dumbledore Ginny Draco here is my Harry Potter ones the screenplays of the movies the script of the play and oh yeah these are my 20th anniversary editions Philosopher's Stone in all three of in all four houses and then uh, the rest in the Ravenclaw colors I really love them every flavor beans a butterbeer cup a, a candle that says Goblet of Fire and and then lastly, Harry Potter page screen, which is massive and really heavy. And this is the only place that it fits. Again, if you want to see all these items in detail, please go and watch my uh, Harry Potter collection video from 2019. Because you can see almost everything from these shelves in that video in a lot more detail, in close-ups and everything. There will be a link for that video down below in the description box. Then for the next couple of shelves, I realize this is a bit of a weird order, but I want to do it in genre and not just go from like Harry Potter, another genre and Harry Potter again. But for now, we have, or I have, lots and lots of fantasy books. So here I have my little Brennan Sanderson shelf with another fake Ikea plant. And then here is uh, the Final Empire series or the Mistborn trilogy. The Way of Kings, part one, Elantris, Warbreaker, which I've read and I really enjoyed it. Need to read more Brennan Sanderson, I know. I desperately need to but i love the way this looks i love the look of the white covers underneath that i have my books by patrick Rothfuss, the name of the wind the Weisman sphere and the name of the wind 10th anniversary edition with red pages and a beautiful cover it's really really pretty and then i have my laney taylor books so the daughter of smoke and bone series and the beautiful stranger dreamer duology these ones are pretty and stunning and one of my most beautiful books i oh this plant is maybe not that ideal but these books oh so pretty so pretty and i love the book series as well this is such a good duology and then underneath that firstly i have a picture of me my sister and my mother this picture is the three of us in london because we go there every two years with the three of us to go shopping to have fun and it's always so nice and this is a picture of us three and i really liked it so that's why it's here but then for the books i have the beautiful the gorgeous very loot special editions of An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. I put them like this, so with some of them you can see the uh, beautiful pages with the, you know, illustrations on it. And then you can also see the cover. I'm actually not sure, maybe I'm going to turn them all around so you can see all the beautiful pages. But these ones, they are signed, they are beautiful, they are gorgeous. And then over here I have my original books for An Ember in the Ashes. And I'm actually not sure... If I want to keep those or if I want to unhaul them. Because I also like them. But also I don't think I need multiple editions of this series. Like these covers aren't too special. But also they're not available anymore. At least the first two. So who knows. Maybe I will keep them. But that is a decision for later. For now they will stay here. In this corner I have all my Libardugo books. So that means Six of Crows. 
Crooked Kingdom, The Language of Thorns, which is a collection of short stories that I still have not read yet. The King of Scars duology with Rule of Wolves, which I have not read yet, but they look very pretty and they sound very interesting. And then my beautiful editions of the Shadow and Bone series, which is very popular right now because of the Netflix adaptation. Then I have The Lord of the Rings, the three books, which I have not read yet, still not. <laughs> I've owned these for years, but I'm kind of intimidated by them because they are so massive and so dense and so... I guess prestigious, like Lord of the Rings. There's so much that comes with that. But I have read The Hobbit, which is more of a children's book. So I actually have read something by Tolkien, but just not The Lord of the Rings yet. Then it's Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. These are the 10th anniversary editions and they are beautiful. I love them so much. Like these covers are stunning and beautiful and so much better than the original covers. But then I also have this box set of like the film editions. They're just basic black with this illustration on it. And I'm not going to take them out because again, this is a case of box set that I just cannot get them in again. These ones aren't that special. So maybe I will unhaul these, not sure. But for now, again, they are pretty and they look fine right here. A little Katniss Pop Funko, Katniss the Girl on Fire. And then we have the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which is the prequel, which was, well, mixed to say the least. Then I have more fantasy books and these are sort of um, yeah, organized by color because these are all black and red and it just looks so nice together. The last Namsara, which I have not read yet, also has been years. A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, also a special edition. These are amazing. I love these books. Children of Blood and Bone and Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. And the Dutch edition, because I met Tomi Adeyemi and, uh, at a signing. So these ones are signed. And I actually don't know if the third book of this series is ever going to be published because I haven't heard about it in a very long time. Then for the next shelf I have mostly series, fantasy book series. The Raven Boy series or the Raven Cycle which I still have not finished yet. I have read the first three books but not the last one. It's also a bit, I think it's a bit more than just fantasy. It's also a bit supernatural and magical and things like that. I enjoyed it but also not really sure, but I just really want to finish the series because I want to finish things. The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. I have read the first three books, but I still need to read The Mask Falling, which was published earlier this year. The Priory of the Orange Tree, which is a book that, yeah, I've talked about many times, but I still have not read it. Then I have another picture. This one is of me, my sister and my brother. As you can probably tell, this one was taken in... Maybe 2012 or 2013. I actually think I'm either 16 or 17 in this picture. I know it looks like we're almost... Like the background looks too good to be true. But the background is real. Because this was taken on holiday in Italy. When we were going on a boat trip. And when we went scuba diving later that day. So this is all real. It's so pretty. I love it. It's my favorite picture of the three of us together. And it just looks so beautiful and summer-like. And it's also a beautiful memory. Because that was a really fun vacation day. And it's also weird to think that we're now all so much older than in this picture. Like neither of us, like none of us look like this anymore. We are very much tiny in this picture. Like it's seven years ago or something. But yeah, enough of that. Underneath we have the um, Lunar Cycle, Lunar Chronicles. Yeah, Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. Again, a booktube classic that was so popular back in, what was it, 2015, 2016. Wow, this should make a comeback because I really enjoyed it at the time. I actually don't know how much I would enjoy it if I read it right now because it has been years, but it's just so special to me because it was one of the first series that I discovered through BookTube. So it will always have a place on my bookshelves. And also I have Ferris, which is the prequel. Also very fun, not amazingly special but it's here to sort of complete the set. I have a box set of I actually didn't know this oh the Broken Earth series that is it. The Broken Earth series by N.K. Jemsen which was recently has become very popular again and uh, I have heard some very good reviews and I want to read it very soon. I have The Graceling by Kristen Cashore but this is a bit of an older cover I think. I think they got new covers but I'm actually not sure. It's pretty and it looks interesting and it's also one of those booktube classics and it's an entire series but I have not read it yet. And then Never Night by Jay Kristoff. Oh this book. This is the oldest book on my TBR that 
I have to admit, I'm probably never going to read, but I also just cannot bring myself to get rid of it. Because it's so pretty and it was a gift and I want to believe that there's still, still a chance that I will read it. But let's be honest, it's probably not going to happen. So maybe I will make somebody else happy with this beautiful hardcover edition that is not available anymore. Again, more fantasy. Like, I thought that I had the most historical fiction books, but I actually think I have the most fantasy books, to be honest. But yeah, again, a couple that I haven't read. Truth Witch, Cryer's War, which is... One of the prettiest books that I own. I love this design so much. The City of Brass, also one of first book in a series that I really want to read. The Side series, which I actually have finished because it does happen sometimes that I finish book series. The Farce Hair Trilogy, which I've only read the first book of. And I really want to read more Robin Hobb. The Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. Kings of the Wild, The Poppy War, which I've heard so many good things about. And yeah, I just love this bit because it's also... It's just so aesthetically pleasing that they're all the same size. And yeah, some um, other stuff that I thought looked nice to, you know, hold these books a bit. And then I still have space for more books because, to be honest, like, I will buy more books in the future. So it's just holding up space for now. The final shelf that is fantasy-ish. And I now see that it's not right. This is not the second book. This should be the other way around. Let me just fix that. Yes, there we go. So here we have the Diviner series, which is actually supernatural historical fiction. So not really fantasy. But I guess you could say that things like ghosts and supernatural things are also sort of fantasy. But... I mostly put them here because I just like to have a lot of book series in one spot. I actually finished this series recently, which is insane. And it is really good. I just think the last book was a bit of a disappointment. The Percy Jackson series. Oh, so much fun. I've also finished this. It's middle grade. It's so interesting and I love mythology and this book series plays into that so well. The Heroes of Olympus series, which is a sequel to that. I've only read the first two books. I really need to continue with that because I know I will love the books after that so much. It's Dark Materials that I think I'm not going to finish because I just have no interest to do so whatsoever. I haven't read The Umber Spyglass, but I just still think they are so pretty and so nice to look at on my shelves. The Once and Future Witches, which I think should probably... The Once and Future Witches, which I think should probably on my mythology shelf because it's more like witches and mythology than actual fantasy, I think. I have not read it yet. House of Salt and Sorrow, The Grey Shear, also fantasy. And I guess that pretty much is it for my fantasy, but I still have a couple of shelves left. This is sci-fi. So firstly, we have the Illuminae books, the first two Illuminae books. I have read Illuminae years ago and I still have not read Gemina. This is another one of those cases where I'm like, I don't want to unhaul it because I don't want to give up on the series because I love the first book so much. So... I'm just going to keep on dreaming with that one. My name is Monster, which I found in a bookstore last year. And I have no idea what exactly it is about. But it sounded futuristic, so that's why it's on the shelf. The Martian, which is really funny. Oh yeah, A Long Way to Small Angry Planet, a really good one. Axiom's End by Lindsay Ellis, which I want ooh, which I want to read soon. Because I love Lindsay Ellis' videos. Sleeping Giants, so, so good. And then the new book by Sylvain Novell, which is History of What Comes Next. And Station. 11, which is also one of my favorites. It's about a pandemic, so <laughs> it's very relatable. Well, not that relatable because this one is so much more worse, but a really good one. Final sci-fi-ish um, Evil Men by Tom and Giovanna Fletcher, or Giovanna and Tom Fletcher. An absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green, and the sequel to that, An Absolutely Foolish Endeavor. Oh, A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor. Apologies. I have not read this one yet. Even though I've started it last year, but then I got in a reading slump and I never finished it. So I should start it again at some point because an absolutely remarkable thing I enjoyed so much. And I know the sequel is going to be good as well. This is How You Lose the Time War, Ready Player One, and then Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. Which is also a Brandon Sanderson book that I still very much want to read. On the shelf next to it, which is the second to last shelf, I firstly have my uh, non-fiction books. So I have uh, historical books like the Radium Girls and Body Positive books and... Yeah, here's another one. Um, this is going to hurt. This is like a memoir of a doctor. A Dutch book, Educated, which I enjoyed so much. And 
Sapiens, Homo Deus, Stephen Fry Mythology, The Five, which is about Jack the Ripper, uh, digital minimalism, all non-fiction and definitely a genre that I want to read more. And then after that, I have all my Dutch books. So books written by Dutch authors, written in Dutch. Um, at Achterhuis, The Diary of Anne Frank, which of course is originally in Dutch. Another non-fiction book. Oh, this is actually not... Um, this isn't supposed to be here because this is non-fiction and it should be the other way around. Okay. <laughs> More Dutch books that probably won't say a lot to many of you, but uh, that I'm very excited to read because I really want to make an effort to read more Dutch books by Dutch authors. This one specifically um, sounds very interesting to me because it's about World War II, so more historical fiction. Which is here because it's in Dutch. And it's also about, I think, a family who was hidden away because they were Jewish. It just sounds very interesting. Then it's time for the final bookshelf. And this is what I like to call my weird and random shelf. And this shelf contains books that I just... I don't want to unhaul, but I don't know where to put them otherwise. And it also contains books that are very special to me because of childhood reasons or because they were gifts or things like that. So here I have another Dutch book that I really enjoy. Simone van der Vlucht, The Reunie. There's also an English translation of this one. This is one that I read as a child that I really enjoyed. More Simone van der Vlucht. This this book was a gift from my grandma, this one as well. Um, this is one that I enjoyed as a child. This is one that I bought with the very first money that I made myself. Like, I immediately went to the bookstore and bought this book, which is... It's kind of a weird book because it's about a young girl who wants to become a ballerina and then she has an accident and she cannot be a ballerina anymore. It's kind of random, but a really beautiful story, actually. Some more Dutch books, some childhood books. This one was also a gift from my grandma. Um, yeah, it's sort of like a weird shell of books that are connected to my childhood for some reason, but that also I don't think need to be on display all that much. And then also um, Pets Right Ness. This one I bought in Rome, so I don't want to get rid of it, but also I'm not really sure if I want to read it still. Birthday Girl, which is a weird smutty book that's not sure if I'm going to read it, but maybe I will give it a try. And uh, Lizzie Bennet, the Lizzie Bennet Diaries, just a very weird and random shelf. And those were the last of my books. We finally made it. And yes, that was it for my 2021 bookshelf tour. I really hope you have enjoyed it. As you can see, I have a lot of bookshelves. I have a lot of books. So yeah, there was definitely a lot to go through, but we managed it. And now I have an updated bookshelf tour and I really hope that it was to your liking and then if you did like this video maybe give it a thumbs up or a like or subscribe if you want to see more bookish content or leave a comment to let me know what your favorite part of this bookshelf tour was as always i would love to hear your thoughts and as always i would really appreciate the support so thank you so much for that you guys are amazing and then hopefully i will see you again very soon in one of my next videos and until then bye